457s are very important, but it's a supplemental retirement account that we all should know, at least before we even start different professions. If you are new to this channel, I definitely make sure that you go ahead on and subscribe, uh, share with a friend, because this is something that you do not want to miss. In a world where financial advice is as blurry as a wild night of cheap jello shots, clear your head and your monetary halitosis with the About That Wallet Show, hosted by Anthony Weaver. Leave those jello shots for the amateurs and learn to indulge in the top shelf bottles, baby. Now, here's your host, Anthony Weaver. All right, everybody. So, welcome back to the About That Wallet podcast where we help you build strong financial habits. And also, I want to talk about 457s in this one. So if you know a teacher, a firefighter, or somebody that's in the public service, they have this option, this retirement account called a 457. Now, a lot of people actually actually put a tally out there on Instagram and my stories to say, you know, have you ever heard of a 457? A lot of people were like, no, I have no clue. And I was like, should I go ahead on and create a, a, no, you know what? I said, I'll create a video for it. And I was thinking about creating a small reel about this will be too much. And it'll be a disservice to you and also all the other viewers. So I want to do a deep dive into a 457 plan. So first off, what the heck is it? Under the IRS code, it's usually called a 457B, which is a deferred compensation plan. And... Really, it is it's just a plan for the deferred compensation described out of IRS section 457, hence 457, are available for certain state and local governments uh, and non-governmental entities tax exempt under the IRS section 501. They can be either eligible plans for under the, IR, the IRC 457B or ineligible plans under the IR, the IRC 457F. Typically, most of the time, we're going to talk about the 457B. Um, and the beautiful thing about the 457 plan is that it's not regulated. How, like, the 401, the 403B, the TSP, or the SEP. And for those of you who don't know what a SEP is, it is the supplemental retirement. It's another supplemental retirement plan um, that is used strictly for like if you own your own business and so forth. So who in, in the world can actually get one of these 457 plans? It's magical plans. It is your teachers, your firefighters, your police officers have these options to get it. Now, what are their limitations? The cool thing about the limitations is that it's really based on each year. Each tax year, it changes. So at the time of this recording, we're going to be looking at the 2023 uh, options or contributions. So right now, the max contributions that you can do for a 457 plan is 22500 Because last year in 2020, well, in this year, 2022, was... 20,500. The reason why I'm having this episode released early is so that you can start modifying your paycheck at the beginning of the year so that you can max out the next year. So hopefully if you, this reaches you on time, if it does not, I apologize. Maybe you can either tune in so you don't miss these opportunities like this going forward. Now, what are the advantages of the 457 plan? is that the contributions to the 457 plan is that they are tax deferred. And also the earnings on a retirement money are tax tax deferred. Now, the cool thing about it also, if you already have, uh, most of the time you're going to have a 403B plan, which is just like the 401k for, you know, the private industry. But for the public industry, like your teachers or firefighters and other government employees, like your state employees, you have the option for the 403 plan, which is already like individually lies 
individual, which is individual um, contributions to your retirement account. The reason why they came up with these plans like the 401k was because they were getting rid of pensions and therefore the 401k plan was the most option so that you can go ahead on and voluntarily contribute to your retirement. And now you have these options that are coming out. So now you're looking at, okay, I have, a, I hear about this 457. How do I get into it? Now, the way you get into it, because a lot of employers do not tell you about the 457 plan, you have to go to HR and ask them about the 457 plan. If they do not have that option, when you go to the actual um, HR, you will actually have to go to the website. So since mostly here in the state of Maryland, most of the people that listen to the show is in the state of Maryland, you actually go to just search 457 plan in, in Google, and it will come up with the MSRP, which is the Maryland Teachers and State Employees Supplemental Retirement Plans. When you go in here, you actually click on the employees, then you click on plan information, or you can click on an enrollment. And when you click on the enrollment, you just click through and just tell you about the different options that you have here. So you really want to just go through the enrollment kit, you know, just have everything there. So now that you know, just putting your money into it is one thing. Now you need to figure out which plan you want to look into. The thing that you want to, I want to stress this a lot to you all, is that when you go inside these different plans, especially the full 3B or the, even the 401k, but the 457 plan, same exact thing. These are just different retirement vehicles. Think about it as a car. Now, or no, in fact, think about it as a dealer. I'll say it that way. Yeah. Think about it as a dealer. So they have a bunch of, the full 57 plan is very limited on what ways that you can actually contribute. They have different um, retirement plans in there. The cool thing about it, though, is that when you pick one, you need to look out for the fees that are associated with it. You want to look for a low cost uh, plan, which is 0 0.0302. It shouldn't be like 0 0.5 or 0 0.2 or 2.2 because every thousand dollars in there, they take in about hundred dollars right off the top. So that's that's the reason why I said I want to you want to make sure you get them very low. And you don't want them to take more than necessary to manage your money because actually that's what they're doing. They're managing your accounts. Now the cool thing about it is that depending on where you at, Fidelity has a lot of uh a lot of ties with the state of Maryland. Um, so if you are in the state of Maryland, you actually have access to a lot of the accounts that Fidelity has to offer. Um, but you can you can decide on which broker you want. I'm just using Fidelity, Fidelity as a option right now. I think each 457 plan has a different option of the different brokers you can decide to put your money into. Um, because you don't you need to be active with your retirements. If you let it lapse and not really care about it, then you're going to realize that, you know, hey, the money wasn't even invested. You were just putting money away. And I have hear that often when they're taught to different clients. It's just that they just thought they were retiring. They were putting their money to retirement. Yeah, I'm doing all this, gross, all this great stuff, but they were not investing the money. And getting the money invested is one of the most important things that you need to do. Because you need to know, you know, you want to retire, but, you know, you're doing all this stuff, tax deferred and all that fun stuff, but it's not really doing anything. All right. So let's do the pros and cons. Now, we already talked about one of the pros, which is that it is pre is pre taxed money that is already put into these accounts. That is amazing. The other pro about it 
is that you can contribute to the 457 plan at the same time you're doing your 403B plan, which means that with the 2023 limits, you can do 22500 for your 403B plan plus another 22500 for your 457 plan. That is great. So that means in total, you're putting in 45000 out of the year already. And we already saw inside um, the, during the pandemic, they was like, well, are you, um, if you make under $75,000 for the year, then you actually can get some extra money from the government. Now, the cool thing about it, though, is that since it's pre, all this stuff looks like it's actually being taken away from your paycheck. So at the end of the year, which is your AGI, which is your annual gross, mean adjustable gross income, meaning that, you know, all this money that you put away is actually taken away from what you actually take home. So technically you could make like that you made under 75,000. You plan under the, the rules of the game. So you reap the benefits too. Now, the cool thing about the 457 is so cool that for the people who gets it, it's, it's really great. Um, another cool feature about it is that you're not stuck. So say if you were a firefighter and you decided to leave being a firefighter and just become, I don't know, you become a like a computer tech, you can take your 457 plan and roll it over to an IRA if you want to with no penalty and you can actually withdraw this money before your retirement age and keep your 403B plan all together. Now you can't say that that's that right there. That that's amazing. Like how is that possible? But I think it's great to give this money and have these options for the people who work in the public service because it allows them to, one, allow flexibility in their paychecks. Two, allow them to actually save up for downfalls. And three, in case something happens, they have the option to withdraw the money. They're going to be taxed at the time of withdrawal, but there is no penalty of a 10% early withdrawal from it. So I'm looking at it from, you know, Montgomery County, even though they show here, the governmental 457. Now, this is a penalty for early withdrawals here that they got on here. So for the full 3B plan, they're talking about the 10% tax penalty before age 59 and a half and may be subject to income taxes. But for the 457 plan, they say the distributions are not subject to the 10% early uh, withdrawal penalty. That is an amazing thing. However, a 10% early withdrawal penalty would apply to IRA, qualified plan, or 403. So, in other words, they're just saying for the, all the other plans, you'll get penalized. But this one, <sighs> this is great. Um. And also they got the emergency withdrawals, which means that, you know, in case something happened um, and you don't have to worry about the penalties, you don't get penalized anyway for the 457 plan. You can just say, you know what, I need my money and they'll give it to you. But with the full three B's or the 401k's, you need some type of emergency withdrawals. Say if like you about to get evicted or you got a foreclosure coming up, you can withdraw it without some penalties. Um, you know, you got some loss of relatives or you got to get some repairs done to your primary or your principal residence. These are the things that qualify as emergency withdrawals. And those are fine. Um, they all object, like you do have to do, um, at the age of 72 or 70 and a half, 
you have to do what they call is a minimum distribution requirements. So even if you put all this money in there, you have to take it out uh, after the, the age of 72. Now, also keep in mind that with these age limits, that when it comes to your last three years of your retirement with the 457 plan, you can go ahead on and contribute up to three times the amount of the 457 plan. So say you coming up on your three years and this is one of your three years coming in 2023. This is your first one. You can contribute up to $60,000 to your retirement account. Now I know that's a lot of people try to use these predictions like, Oh yeah, if you stay at 19,000 for 10 years and so forth, that sounds great. That's if you set it and forget it, you didn't change the contributions at all. Obviously, we have been looking at this tax thing over and over again. Each year, it increases. Anywhere between 2,000, you got 5,000, I mean 500. I've seen 1,000. So it's slowly trying to increase more and more options for the people who are getting close to retirement. And because usually by the time we retire, we are very rich inside the money that we actually put into our retirements that we don't know what to do next. And then when we start taking the money out, we were like, oh man, we got to pay taxes too. So everybody's financial situations are a little different. So you want to make sure that you consult with a financial, uh, a certified financial advisor to make sure that you're doing the best thing for your situation. I'm just here to provide you some information from educational purposes to let you know and so you be educated when you have these sit downs with your financial advisor. Now that we all understand how to utilize a 457 plan, I highly recommend you, if you're a teacher, firefighter, um, somebody who worked with the State Department at some capacity, even some uni universities, um, they cannot be students, but you can be like, um, either if you're a custodian, um, you know, if, you know, like custodians, like just doing groundskeeping, um, even if you're a full-fledged doctor and teacher and so all this sort of stuff, highly recommend to look into this plan and see what's available. Now, for those of you who are in the state of Maryland, they do have Fidelity um, phone number here. This is not sponsored by Fidelity at all. It will be nice if it was. Uh, but they do have the phone number, which is 800-343-0860. Again, that's 800-343-0860. Now, I don't have... Uh, too much more to say about this 457 plan. If you know somebody that is working in those public sectors and actually really uh, never looked into their retirement accounts, please share this episode with them and share. I'll have all the resources in the show notes so that they can just start off somewhere with their own research. All right, everybody. Y'all be safe. Um, and I don't want to say peace yet because I want to let you all know that I do have a newsletter. If you guys have not signed up for my newsletter yet, it is about that wallet.com forward slash newsletter so that you do not miss out on any, any of these future tips and tricks. Now, one of the tips and tricks that I'm going to add inside the newsletter is about the American Express Platinum Card. Now, for those of you who are mil active military or know somebody that's an active military, you want to make sure you share the newsletter with them because they actually are allowing people who are active military members to get a waived fee for the $697 uh, for the platinum card. And because it's waived, that means they get all the perks that comes with it without the additional cost of it. And the beauty of it is that I really wish I could get this card. I I just don't find it in my budget to get it. But if I could do it without an annual fee, I'll definitely get it. 
it allows you to have access to the American Express lounges in all the airports. So if you travel, you make sure you want to get this. Now, say if you're a sports person and you like to travel and you want to travel with your team, definitely the card to get because American Express give you primary seating, primary tickets, and most of the time they like either right behind court side seats. You can't beat that. So, yeah, I just want to share that all with you today. Um, make sure that you all like, subscribe, share. Uh, for those of you who are watching on YouTube and for those of you who are listening on Apple and Spotify, go ahead on and uh, leave a comment and a review. I would love to hear your reviews on the next show. All right, everybody. Y'all be safe. I'm out. Peace.